Hello, I'm Amin Fidassin with the ACES staff. I want to welcome everyone to today's webinar entitled Linking Challenges for Pseudonyms, sponsored by DCMI. Our distinguished presenter is Charlene Cho, who will be introduced by our moderator, Dr. Inkyung Choi. Dr. Inkyung Choi is a teaching assistant professor at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Her research interests stem from her intellectual curiosity about social and cultural pluralistic perspectives which influence ways of organizing knowledge. She also serves at the DCMI Education Committee. I'd like to ask the audience to type your questions into the question panel box and they'll be answered at the end of the presentation. I'll now turn the session over to Dr. Inkyung Choi who will introduce our presenter. Uh, thank you, Aminta. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar today. Um, so the first day of the December. I'll just start right away uh, by introducing Charlene here with us. Charlene Cho is the head of Knowledge Access Department at the New York University Library. She managed cataloging and metadata services. Um, she also served on the PCC Policy Committee, RDA Steering Committee, and then shared BDE uh, Sapienti Entity Identification Working Group. OCLC RLP metadata manager focus group and then CEAL e resource metadata task force. She has committed to do pilot project teaching and research on linked data, multilingual resources, digital scholarship, and then inclusive metadata. And then today she will give us really interesting talk about the authority data with the studium. Um, Charlene, uh, now I will turn this presentation to you. Feel free to um, you know, start your presentation and then give us informative research. Thank you, Inkyung and uh, Minta, you know, for the introduction and also help me to give this presentation. Thank you for the invitation. Okay, let me move on. So first, I want to thank everyone for joining this webinar. And uh, the title of my presentation is Linking Challenges for Pseudonyms. It means it's very challenging. And, uh, and I'm also fascinated by this subject. So let's move on. So the agenda of my presentation today, is I want to have this, you can see the, the category. I want to start from some background information. I also want to share with you is the scope and the methodology. I also want to share some case studies and uh, share the finding and discussion. I would like to also make some recommendation and also show you some of my, I mean, some of the area I think need for the research. But one thing I want to mention to you is I conduct research on this subject since 2018. And I present my initial finding at 20, 2019. Link for the LD4 conference, and I, I was very happy. I received some really positive feedback in terms of privacy, etc. So I revised the presentation with more updated information and involved some pilot testing. So first, I want to start with some background information. I would think it's fascinating to see the definition of tsunami. And uh, you can see different kind of, um, they have different terms and they have similar, defin similar definition. So you can see alias, fictitious names, pen name, nickname, stage name. And most importantly, that means it's not real name, it's not a true name. And uh, if you look at the history, it's very interesting to see some writers need, needed to use pseudonym for privacy when they author books. So this is one of the examples being cited frequently as Bronte sisters. They use the pen name for their early work so as not to reveal their gender so that local residents would not know that books related to people of the neighborhood. The Brontes use their neighbors as inspiration for characters in many of their books. So over here, you can see why they're doing this. It's about privacy. They inspired by their neighbors, but they don't want to reveal their true identity. And uh, over here, I think using the pseudonym is indeed more important for leading writers. For instance, a writer may write a political sensitive book and revealing one's real identity 
may be life-threatening, and that pseudonyms are also known as anonyms. So over here on this slide, I'll continue the background information. So I want to see different definition from different sources. For example, Wikipedia describes pseudonym as part-time names used only in certain contexts, usually adapted to hide individual's real identity. And in addition to individual pseudonyms, a joint pseudonym can be used for multiple writers writing one book together or for a collective project such as Nicolas Bokaki, sorry for my French pronunciation, adopted by mathematician in the 1930s to stand for their collective efforts in the field of mathematics. The last bullet point is talking about in terms of cyberspace, an internet secure a digital pseudonym may be created to protect the privacy of users. Over, the, over here, I really want to emphasize the last bullet point. It's very amazing as when I conduct research, I'm talking about literature review, I found more, um, more journal article or books is really talking about pseudony is in cyberspace. I'm talking about compared to library information science. So in the past two decades, the privacy, security, and identity management is cyber, in cyberspace have been emerging research topics. And the driving force might be the privacy laws and regulations, such as the EU Data Protection Directive, which is the Europe, uh, European Union's harmonized data protection legislation in 1995. Anonymity um, and the pseudonyms have been used as a preventive mechanism for protecting privacy rights. For instance, when records contain sensitive personal data in national social security systems. Approach is proposed to use domain-specific pseudonyms and the unlinkable pseudonym system to enable to control a privacy-friendly exchange of distributed data. In terms of keeping privacy for distributed databases and internet security, privacy is related to human needs and the contemporary law, contemporary view of security of society. So over here, I just want to emphasize it's amazing how can we learn from the computer security. So over here, I also want to introduce is called the VF Virtual International Authority File, and this being hosted by OCLC. And VRF integrates many non authority files in multiple languages into a single platform. But it's challenging to find a source, author's name consistently due to various cataloging rules and big linking because it has a lot of national um, cataloging files. So when an author has a pseudonym, the linking relationship become more complex or ambiguous. So this presentation exempts explore how to improve the linking relationship of persons with more than one identity in VR through definition comparison and case studies in terms of semantic web. So in light of identity management in cyberspace, so library authority data should include in the perspective privacy and security. So continue with the off. Um, so it's amazing. I read this article. It's OCLC researcher. You know, OCLC identifies certain issues such as two non authority records referring to the same entity, or a single authority record being a mix of two entities. So OCLC has enhanced the VR data by merging related non authority data into clusters assign fee of identifier to the clusters and creating links between class as needed between pseudonyms. But they suspect that resolving this issue would be very difficult without deep domain knowledge. So Kellogg have been using VF as one of the major research resources for creating main authority record in LC NAF, main authority file for several years, but found that it's 
imperative to use the is record for persons having more than one identity with caution because its linking relationship are complex, maybe misleading without domain specific knowledge. So over here, so my research project and in this presentation, you can see the scope. I want to describe the scope and methodology. The scope is, I think you can see, I want to focus on many of the records of persons with more than one identity. Also the linking relationship in terms of linked data. Also the methodology, I've done re literature review, also have a definition studies, case studies, comparisons. This is a very important one. So I have the definition for personal name, identities, the variant names, anonyms and pseudonyms, joint pseudonym and partial identities, et cetera. And you can see my finding analysis. So over here, this is one of the comparison table of terminology. So over here, you can see, I try to have a different terms, like pseudony, alternate identity, real identity, personal identity, and also I can divide it by what's their definition in Wikipedia, in RDA, in the privacy enhanced identity management discipline and system. So over here, you can see different definition and uh, why some missing, why they have some, they really think this is a very important term and with a very clear definition. So over here, this is a, I, it's a, it's a very large table, so I divide into two. So this is the second part of the table. So as you can see here, turn, continue with something called collective identity, partial, complete, also with enemy and uh, anonymity and digital identity, identity management. And over here, I really want to emphasize the last point. I really love this definition in terms of identity management for identity management. It's also known as identity and access management. It's in computer security. The security and the business discipline that enables the right individual to access the right resources at the right times and for the right reasons. And also you can see in privacy enhanced identity management, it emphasizes more managing various partial identities, usually denoted by pseudonyms of an individual person. So over here, um, I want to show you uh, some of the comparison. Um, first, I want to say definition. So you can see code RDA is the um, resource description. Um, so it's, it's the cataloging rule and uh, person and identity. Because when we talking about the person in RDA, you will see the terminology called alternate identity of a person and uh, the pseudony. So over here, you can see in RDA, when we're talking about person, you will see real identity. You also can see alternate identity. So this is the definition, but also I want to show you when we talk about pseudony and talking about definition, they vary in different languages or cultures. So over here, I just want to use one example here to show you the difference. So if you're talking about the East Asian language, so over here, this is coming from the CJK, it's Chinese, Japanese, Korean. It's the name authority, the best practice. It's this document on website, on PCC website. So over here on my left-hand side, you can see the, the characters is the same character. However, you can see different definition, different translation for each term. And over here, you can see with different kind of definition, it could be linking to the different interpretation and also could be linked to the different, um, your, your catalog judgment. So that's why I think this is something to show. If we look at the pseudony in multicultural context, it also has some sort of complexity, and that's something we probably need to consider. And over here, 
you can see the linking of the pseudonyms and the anonyms. So over here, it's under the Lab of Congress and the PCC program for collaborative cataloging. The cataloging rules is let's assume to link the real name and the one's pseudonyms. It means that linking relationship is, is, is already assumed and you have to do it. And I will show you more example later. But on the other hand, Wikipedia also provides a guideline. It's called the bi biographies of living persons with the emphasis of privacy. The other thing I also want to mention is, again, is really the in cyberspace, um, in cyberspace security. So over here, I want to mention this point as well, is when a pseudony is anonymous or has no information for the real name, the pseudony might have been created as a separate record without any linking relationship like an orphan record in the name authority file. In the setting of privacy-enhancing identity management, the system ensures the linkable and unlinkable options for subject identifiable or not. For instance, the attacker cannot sufficiently identify the subject within a set of subjects. The anonymity set Regarding the degree of linkability, the complex algorithm is designed for various kinds of pseudonyms according to the kind of context for their usage. The strength of unlinkability increase with the application of role relationship pseudonyms, the use of which is restricted to both the same role and the same relationship. So this is something in the you know, privacy enhanced kind of identity management, but I think that concept is so important with linkable and unlinkable. And also you, I can see there's a fundamental difference in different cataloging rules. As you can see, original RDA, um, also LCPCC policy statement, and, other, and this, this, they assume that really the identity with the real identity and alternate identity, but certain national library, they actually, they are really person-based. And Wikipedia is also followed a person-based. And also, when we're talking about pseudony, they have different type of pseudony. For example, it's not only individual pseudonyms, they also one called joint pseudony, as I mentioned earlier. So there's an instruction in the DCMZ1, it's really over a link here, but Wikidata called uh, collected pseudony. So now I want to share some cases with you. So when we're talking about pseudony, I think most people, I would say the most popular name is Mark Twain. I'm talking about in English language or American literature. So I use the VF, the platform. So I study the Mark Twain and all is all his related names. That means, as you know, Mark Twain is really the pseudony. And the real name is Samuel Clemens. And uh, you also can see other names for Mark Twain. It's amazing. He has so many pseudonyms as well. So, for example, the Quintus Sangras, and also Louis Conti, and also Jean Alden. So I really study each name with different kind of grouping and also look at each records and really want to study. So for example, 400 field, we call the variant form. And the 500 field, it means C also, it means separate record linking to that. So it's quite amazing to see under Samuel Clemens, it's really have three groups of heading to choose. On the other hand, this is also treated as a variant linked to the Mark Twain. So the second name, the second pseudony, has, has been divided in two groups, and the four libraries have separate records. I mean, this name actually something treated as a variant and linked to the Mark Twain. And Louis County is also very amazing to see. It's really a mixture of the related identities in the four access field. 
and solve them with the separate records. And the last one, and there's no separate record in the LC PCC name authority file, but I only found two records from ISNI and SUDAC in France. So over here, I just want to show you is how complex it is when a person has more than one identity. And thinking about all the factors I mentioned earlier, the cataloging rules, it could be from different areas or different countries. And also each name and could be have a mixture of some being treated as a variant, some being treated as separate records for separate identity. So the second name I look at this, it's a very popular author in Asia. So you can see his pseudonym is Ko Xiaoye, and his real name is Ko Li Yuan. So for his real name, I only can find his real name in Italy only. On the other hand, actually, this author did publish books in his real name. So as you can see, you can see different kind of practices at different country. The next case I study, I think is very fascinating, is um, Michael um, Mocock and James Colton, Colton. So two of them have a joint pseudonym. And it's quite amazing to see. I'm going to show you the slide to show the complexity of sometimes they use the real name, sometimes use the joint pseudonym. And Michael also has his his own pseudonym. So the diagram really show how complex it could be. The last example I study um, is really a Chinese name. It's quite amazing to this, see this author um, by the end of 19th century and the early 20th century, one person could have 55 pseudonyms. And as you can see, different, different national library catalog I mean, they have different policy, so you can see how complex the linking with mixed identity base and person base. So over here, this is just the screenshot to show, I didn't show all the Mark Twain's name. So over here, I just show you the Mark Twain in VR. If you search Mark Twain, Mark Twain in VR, you can see here is 1,000, 396 heading found. So you can see such a large group. So that's why I was amazed that OCLC researcher have did a, a fascinating job as how can they group this with the, all the challenging factors. So over here, you can see all the icon to see your different national library or different platform like ESNI or Wikidata. So you can see different languages, so one thing you can notice is, as I mentioned earlier, Lewis County and Samuel Clements actually sound the country treated as a variant name. It's really in the same record of Mark Twain. So over here, put on this slide, this means two authors with two joint pseudonyms and both of them publish books in real name or individual pseudonym at the same time. So I also attached the cover of the book here. So over here, you can see um, the Michael, he has his real name. They also, he has multiple, his own pseudonym. They have a joint pseudonym actually for two names. And then, um, so the other author actually only uses his real name. So over here, I just want to let you know, um, I think this case actually is more complex in the Mark Twain. And um, you can see if you include both pseudonym and the individual pseudonym and plus the real names, it makes the, the scenario more complex, how to link in different identity. So this is the one I mentioned to you is, is really called the um, author with 55 pseudonyms. So in the VR, the virtual national international authority fire, 
I found six headings for Fan Zhengsheng, and this actually is his real name. So you can see the authority record actually created for his real name. So I will explain more later on. So you can see here is the, the real name is created, including United States and FCNF, and it could be for other platform. But over here, you can see if our National Central Library, they all actually have only one record they should be using the personal approach. So over here, you can see all the Sudanese being treated as a variance. So under the full access field. And on the other hand, you can see actually number two and number six, they are the same. And three, four, five, you can see all this are the, the individual pseudony and being created as a separate identity or separate record for this identity. So you can see it's also kind of mixed scenarios. So now I I found all of this, you know, literature review comparison. So I want to share with you my findings, and hopefully after my presentation, we have time to really have interesting discussion. So the first diagram over here um, is really kind of comparison. If this national library is follow RDA cataloging rule, or it's not, doesn't follow RDA. So that means if a person with more than one identity, you can see in VF clustering, clustering is the person with more, more than one identity, if it's RDA, it should be separate identified and record. But if it's non-RDA, it's just one identified, identified record for a person something with mixed models. If a person just with one identity, I think this is more logical and simple and straightforward with a linking relationship. So this is the next one with this one. It's a kind of a scenario, I would like to say is a possible scenario. As in VF, a person with only publication under Sudan. For example, if it's LCNF, under LCNF, there's Sudanese 1 and Sudanese 2, but it's really the variant name for the real name of with the variant name for real name. So I would say this case is, um, so when a person only publish a novel in one, in one's Sudanese, LCNF may only have two name authority records without any record for one's real name. However, it is likely Wikidata has one's real name as the main name with the pseudonym under also known as. So that's a kind of comparison between LCNF and Wikidata. And that kind of data also really being indexed and conference and displayed in the platform. And the next one, actually, this is the one I really think is very interesting, is this is the one I really want to combine different scenario and into one diagram. So you, you can see there's a person one, person two. I want to use a different kind of platform into one, this one diagram is. Um, person one, if it's wiki data, just one identifier for all identities. If it's an LCNF, you, you can see the identifier for real name, and that's the placeholder. And you have alternate identity A. It could be a joint pseudony with a person two. And again, you then you can see the LCNF identified with that joint pseudony. But also you can see for person two. The person two, you have the alternative A as a joint pseudony. You can see with person one and with that joint student identifier in LCNF. And the person two with LCNF identifier the real name placeholder, the LCN identifier with alternative identity. <coughs> so with identity B pseudonym. So 
Over here, I also want to show you the person two. In which data, only one identifier. And for all the identities, including name change, very name, and pseudonym. But on the other hand, you can see I have a, a box for the person one. It's called alternate identity B. It's called unlink enemy. Or person two also have an alternate identity C. It's unlinkable pseudonym for privacy. So I really combine different scenarios. It's really think about is it link or unlinkable on open data. So um, over here, I think this is really show something could be is more real and thinking not just in the library community, also thinking about a cyberspace. And that's the kind of thing I want to share with you. So over here, as I mentioned earlier, the diagram, I just want using that diagram, now I want to summarize and try to explain why I think they are really the, they are complex issue in VR. As I mentioned earlier, it was person versus identity-based identifiers, single versus separate record approach. Each VR cluster identified may be created for one person or, or one identity since VR provides a platform to link various authority data for more than, for more than 40 agency. Some of the agency identifiers are for one identity, some of them are for multiple identities according to the encoding standards. And the definition of pseudonym RDA or other standards. So Wikidata consistently use the approach of one record, one identifier for each person who has either one or more than one identity. So assuming both LCNF and ESNI have adopted the separate record identifier approach for separate identity and records, but they are mixed models for certain cases. Indeed, pseudonyms are very challenging to keep consistency, to keep consistent and clear in linking relationship within the app. The second point, inconsistency in linking related identities. So both LCNF and ESNI have used the approach of identity-based identifier for different identities. However, the consistency and accuracy of linking related identities totally depend on availability of source, source files for separate identity resources. This is the primary reason why the same person may only have separate identifier record for related identity in LCNF or ESNI inconsistently. Okay, furthermore, there's often a gap for author's name between bibliographic and authority records. For instance, one's real name is transcribed in Mark 245, subfield C, but one's authority is authorized access point is only linked to the authority record of one's pseudonym. The third point, inconsistency in variant names. Based on the label of variant names, we may make some inf inf inferences through the comparison of examples. Both VR and LCNF label variant names as alternate name forms and variants, respectively. Easily simply includes all variant names with the preferred name all together without a separate label at all. For Wikidata, all variant names are labeled as also known as cluster of variant forms for the same person without pseudonym are more logical and consistent than person with more than one identity. The next point, the first definition of related names. So related names vary in a wide spectrum and can link to any related names such as of the joint pseudonyms or related organizations within VRF. LCNF has the most strict definition of related names as see also for the collaborator of joint pseudonym is really marked 63, 63 note. For VRF, ESNI 
and Wikidata relating names consist of wide open names, including re relating names for collaboration, works, organization member, influence person, select co-author, and so on. In summary, relating names are pulled from a certain resource, certain sources, sources file to provide any information related to this person's works or activities. However, these related names are not for the same person. Okay, so for the pseudonym, again, I mentioned earlier, it's also for the privacy and security issues. Okay. So over here, you can see this comparison table. I try to synthesize um, what the points I mentioned earlier. So I have the category is what's the basis and also can see different kind of labels, preferred name, variant names, related identities, related names, separate record for person or more, for person more than one identity identified in URI. So over here, you can see LCNAV, ESNI, Wikidata, and VR. And they can, you can see different kind of the terms over there. And uh, for the identifier, VR emphasizes cluster identifier. The clusters created based on the alignments of data can change frequently. And uh, you can see Wikidata is really person-based. So I will also treat it as a cluster. And the ISNI is identity only assigned to clusters with sufficient confidence rating assigned by the algorithm. So over here, I think this table is helpful for us to see the difference is really in different platform. So over here, I would like to provide some of the recommendation. And uh, first, I want to say for the first one, I think we need the semantic mapping with granularities. So for example, RDA rules, they use in the term alternate identity for variety of pseudonym. And you can see the alternate identity of person, but actually you should go to the policy statement for specific instruction. So over here, you can see the PS policy statement leads you to go to the, the LC, the code of metadata guidance documentation go to the person and there's a specific information to show you. So this is some information, even though PCC has not implemented um, new RDA. And over here, I just want to share information with you. And the uh, VRF. Um, over here, I would think the VRF need to improve the VRF linking and mapping. And as I mentioned earlier, since OCLC has identified problems such as uh, relationships between different type of names issues need to be sorted resolved with specific domain knowledge. Addressing the issue may prevent us from naively using this linked data to resolve very strange inferences. So the linking and mapping of pseudony do need the domain's specific knowledge, such as languages and subjects. When machine cannot complete the complex task, human expert need to evaluate and solve the problem with team effort. And also over here, I think the VR um, need to improve its interface. So over here, my suggestion is that we need a granularity, granularity for persons with more than one identity, maybe the group names by languages. So, the next one is, I think, for LCPCC cataloging rules and for authority record, you will see they can use 020, 024 for related identifiers. In my opinion, in my opinion, we need to use 024 with caution for pseudonyms because that involves it. If it could be this record is it really show is that identify its person or identity base, so that it may be misleading. And also for description DCMZ1 name and series of authority records, is that likely 
maybe we should have some sort of option to consider on link an identity per author's request, especially for leading person. If someone feel uncomfortable, doesn't want to link their identity, for example, the, the alternate identity with the real identity, the author can request and we can really change the, change the authority record. The other one I want to mention, we do need the best practices for the different language or culture. So over here, I just want to let you know, in year 20, 2019, Council on East Asian Library published the CJK pseudonym best practice due to a lot of challenges. So over here, first I want to show you in the LCNA authority file. And uh, over here you can see how the how the the real name and link to the pseudonym. So this one is both the real name and pseudonym. They are the two name authority records. And the real name is added as a symbol 500 C also. And also you can have this called real identity too with this note. So you can see their relationship. And this one, it means this real name has the alternate identity. And this one is really the instruction for joint pseudonym. And as you can see, this is very complex. So you can see the this note tell you this is the joint pseudonym of two authors, the author A and author B. And you can see information here, and also tell you it's the first 500, the 500, the person, the author in the first 500 note. And this is really the separate record for the second author in the record. So over here, you can see um, the, the CJK pseudonym best practice. This was created because there's a lot of really challenging history for the, for the pseudonym. So I think when we implement the uh, original RDA in year 2013. There's also, you can see some information being revised, but that's definitely, if you go to the DCMZ one, it's very important information they're talking about the history. So under the earlier cataloging rule, pseudonym used by non-contemporary authors, authors who died before December 31st, 1900, was sometimes traced as four access references relevant being established in a separate NAR. So when updating NAR for persons that contain pseudonym in four access field, Kellogg should follow current policy on pseudonym. So you can see Z1, you can see all this instruction, and also very important FAQ for pseudonym document, also there for very specific instruction. So, as you can see, um, for Chinese, Japanese, Korean best practice, they try to follow the RDA, the LCPCPS for RDA 9.2.2.8, also the FAQ document. And they decide to, because of with the mix of the history, and that's the kind of approach they try to do, is limit the work to the resource in hand, convert a variant in the 400 field only if there's explicit evidence of a separate identity. No obligation to research and to convert all the 400 fields in the name authority record for non-contemporary persons. In case of doubt, leaving, leave the existing 400 as a very name unchanged. So this is the example, as you can see here, is the one under the CJK best practice, the question, so this name authority record was treated as a non-contemporary author under AACR2 and the first six, 670 field to show published using his pseudonym, Fan Fan Shine. Should this treat it as a separate identity? So the answer is yes. So now you can see this record being created for this pseudonym and with separate identity. And uh, you can see also, also information here. And you also can see his real identity is really called Fan Zhenxiang. So this is 
so I think I still want to mention about this more. I think this is for the research to do. So over here, I really think um, I mentioned only three points. The smarter processing is, um, I think the ESME is more driven by algorithm, but has drawbacks for its inconsistency. Theof has used both human editors and the smart algorithm. With emerging technologies, better tools may be available and the reliable uh, re reliability needs the development of both ESNI and VOF. Having experts to refine data will be a determining factor of success. So second point, identity management. So VOF integrate many main authority files in one platform, but we only see the tip of the iceberg for the complex issues of identity management. For example, archival domain is broader than VOF, which is more driven by published items in library collection. And cyberspace privacy and security is the key issue for the future de development. Goals of library linked data. The library linked data needs to define and evaluate what data model can make library metadata semantically linked. In this linking, simply in this linking simply for related thing without a specific, specific purpose. For library linked data, do we plan to have a semantically linked data or linked data by statistically frequency like Google or DH? So anyway, so over here, I think it's really emphasizing semantic link. The last one I want to mention is I'm very delighted to, to share information. I'm also a development partner for OCLC Meridian project. As some of you probably know, OCLC have a semi project called Shared Entity Management Infrastructure and in year 2021. So NYU, we are really the advisory group member. I'm also, I was also a tester, and which is, a, I, I really appreciate the concept called the Min, minimum viable entity description for work at work. And now I joined this um, project as really want to see how to really using this model called minimum viable entity description for a person. So you can go to this one, you can see the property, there's seven elements and, and the property and referencing the MVED. Because I'm very curious is really how can using limited information, but we can identify an author and without too much personal information. Also, I want to share some information through the environmental scan is the digital privacy is really kind of high priority at NYU. And as you can see, digital privacy is driven by because of a lot of complaint about digital harassments. So for example, we even ask university IT what does NYU do to offer support to ensure that someone is not harassed for doing the work we ask them to do visibly? So what do we do to protect identities? So we're very delighted to know uh, University IT has hired a chief privacy officer so we can save guidance and support from them. The other thing I want to mention is um, I really received this information from a faculty member because they noticed this information on Twitter. So a faculty member actually was the uh, major with major in human center design and engineering. Sheer concern is like their research team had been target harassed due to their research on the election integrity partnership in 2020. So even though they, they are major in computer science because the research subject can cause the digital harassments. And also some of the faculty member, if they research subject in the area like anti-racist, anti-racist and critical race theory, they also the targets. So another one thing, I think um, I also want to test, I really want to see some option to consider as I mentioned earlier for the privacy enhanced cyberspace. Or computer insecurity, how can we use pseudonym or enemies when also have privacy concern? 
an author name is removed or does not display per author's request. Can we break the linkage between the real names and pseudonym for leading persons, especially per author's request? Metadata and linking per author's request. Keep the birth year but remove birthday because of security questions. Replace the birth year by other information such as occupation. The associate author from one's publication due to security concern. Again, goals of link data, library link data. How can we really try to change the tradition from text stream to identifiers? That would be the, the trend. So we should not rely on tons of personal information for disambiguation. And some faculty members feel uncomfortable with too much personal information online, but emphasize the importance of credentials. And that's especially important for the faculty member. They really want to see that for their tenure profile. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your, for your attention. Thank you so much, Charlene. <laughs> it was it was very interesting. I was really um, absorbed by your presentation. Um, actually, we have a uh, one question from Kate. Um, I'm actually sending this question to you, but I'm going to read out loud. Um, so from Kate, uh, since new RDA considers alternate identity of a person and alternate identity of a person of to be nomen um, to nomen relationship element so is a possible solution to stop considering mark authority record as identifying persons and consider them records or nomen that is actually the definition of the 100 field as a personal name heading not a person so do you, can you share uh, your thought on this? Yes, thank you, Kate. I know Kate is the expert for new RDA. Um, so I think the point I mentioned earlier, I do agree with new RDA. You know, it, it's more like, a, as a new RDA, it's more like a data dictionary. And uh, I think the point I emphasize is really the current, the name authority cataloging rules. And uh, on the other hand, I think, how can we, because that's really creating the records to share on the VR. So I think my point is more emphasized on how can we make the current cataloging rule, especially for authority records, more flexible. I think that's, that's my main concern. But I'm definitely fine with the new RDA definition with the alternate identity. But that means some community, they want more specific instruction. And then that's my concern. On the other hand, I think my presentation more emphasize on um, um, how can we use technology to protect privacy, for example, to display or not to display. Because when we talk about VR, you have the record from so many agencies, more than 40 agencies, with different cataloging rules, with different kind of policy, it's really hard. So I think, yes, thank you, Kate, for your point. So I think my concern is really the current main authority records, um, the DCMZ one. I want to see some sort of options there. Um, thank you, Charlene. Um, actually, uh, my internet is going to be a little bit unstable, so I just took my camera off. Um, I also have a quick question. Um, well, you know, first of all, this is so interesting, and then I think this uh, give us a lot of uh, you know thought, which potentially lead to you know many interesting um, like a project regarding identity and authority data. Um, so speaking of the library link data, so uh, Charlene, you mentioned about like how to evaluate data model uh, regarding the library link data. So, and then I think you also in the slide you mentioned as a, one of the suggestions, we need more granular uh, mapping, the semantic mapping in this domain um, of the authority data. But can you uh, speak to what you mean by granularity in semantic mapping here? So, is it a granularity, granularity in the 
identity, so like a real identity, alternate identity, and joint pseudonym. And so there are many different kinds of identity, as well as the, you know, like a persons and pseudonym relationships. So were you meaning to define this, you know, complexity uh, and then have them in the construction of the data model or a modification of the data model for the linked data? Okay, I think the point I want to emphasize, I'm a believer of 80-20 rule. Is, mm -hmm. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, if a person with one identity, I mm -hmm. think the case is more straightforward. Mm -hmm. But what I mentioned, maybe only that 20% is the minority group and they are more complex. So yeah. for example, on VRF, if we can even have the interface design for this group, for person with more than one identity, how can we mm -hmm. provide that kind of warning to the user, be cautious? Mm -hmm. And also provide the information there is really be cautious because also with different language with different kind of case. So that's why the, when a person with more than one identity also plus the language and different rules, and so I think that would be more helpful is really mm -hmm. with that kind of interface design, also with the, the model. How can we really make that model more using the technology, really make mm -hmm. that the mapping or the linking more smart and smarter? I think that's important mm -hmm. I want to emphasize. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's that makes a lot of sense. Um, so uh, from uh, Marcia, we also have some questions. So how do how do you think the approach by Wikidata uh, Wikidata rank multiple values? So in that um, the ranks provide mechanism for annotating multiple values for a statement. So the default rank is the normal rank. Statement value pair may also be marked with preferred and then deprecated rank. Um, so that's the you know Wikidata uh, actually implemented. Um, so what do you think of the approach? Could this be possible also in BF? You think? <laughs> well, I think um, I'm not an expert of Wikidata. I'm more like a user and I can create a Wikidata item. So I may not know the algorithm that well, mm -hmm. um, but I think the key is if there's a smart algorithm, um, mm -hmm. yes, definitely. You know, that's exactly, I don't really know the solution. I think my recommendation is as a user, I want to see that in user interface or the algorithm can be improved mm -hmm. and really make that linking even more more relevant or more semantic linked. On the mm -hmm. other hand, I still want to say, I think when the OCLC implement VR, I'm talking about mm -hmm. 10 years ago, whatever, it's quite amazing use that approach. Yeah, so I just want to say, I also want to praise OCLC able to really cluster all of them together. It's quite yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, just commenting on the Marcia's question, I think this is really, uh, valid point as long as I understand the Wikidata rank system that's based on whether that statement is still valid or not. Um, so if, if some you know statements are outdated, it can be deprecated. So maybe wow. and then that that is verified by the community, I suppose. Um, so this kind of approach can be just one, you know, like a one potential solution to determine, you know, what is the true statement about the identity as well as the pseudonym. Yes. On the other hand, I want to mention, um, even though Wikipedia have that policy, you know, best practice for leading persons, mm -hmm. um, I also heard a lot of concern with Wikidata with too much personal information, also Wikimedia. So uh, that's something I think is something Probably wiki data need to consider as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Marcia also comment uh, for Mark Twain, um, the wiki the Q7245, that's the Mark Twain from the wiki data. And the descript by source gave various names as a subject of this person without ranking. So maybe the ranking system can be implemented here. 
um, so I think we can take a look at this example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate this feedback. Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier in Kong, is um, I'm working on a paper, so definitely there's right. something I can mention in my, I would definitely look into it. Yeah. Yeah. We have another comment from Kate. Um, yeah. Have you looked at Getty uh, ULAN treatment of yes. the pseudonym issue? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Great. I would definitely look at that too, but I, I also the user of Getty. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, this, this has been really interesting. I, I really appreciate Char uh, Charlene um, for sharing your interesting research on this authority uh, and identity management. Especially, I was very impressed by you know the consideration of the security and privacy for the identity management. I think that's definitely something um, that the library science, information science, need to you know like work on for the future for the cyber spaces yes that's mm -hmm. exactly i'm looking forward to we should have work with the other experts together exactly so from marcia she said thank you so much for this amazing webinar and your research and then looking forward to your outcome to be published yes by the guideline <laughs> yes thank you thank you all yeah, I think it's it's about the time <laughs> to wrap up. Really appreciate your um, wonderful talk, and then um, for everyone um, joining us, and then you know, like giving us wonderful questions. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, Charlene. <laughs> bye bye. Um, I'd like to thank Charlene Chow for presenting this very interesting webinar. I also want to thank Dr. Nkyung Choi for moderating this session. I want to remind attendees that one of your many ACES member benefits is complimentary access to all webinars. A recording of today's webinar and a copy of the slides will be posted to the ACES website by tomorrow and will be available to all ACES members and paid registrants. Within 24 hours, attendees will receive an email with a recording of the webinar and a survey. I encourage you to complete it within seven days. Again, I'm Aminta Dawson with the ACE staff, and I thank you for attending today's webinar. This concludes the session. Thank you, Aminta. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much, Charlene, again. I'm going to log up. Uh, hopefully okay. we yeah, keep in touch. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.